Yes. Next coming is the geometrical meaning of zeros of a polynomial. So we have already seen that what is the zero of a polynomial uh, means what value of the variable x will make the polynomial p of x to vanish. That value we call zero of the polynomial that we have seen in the previous class. So here what exactly it's a geometrical interpretation what exactly it talks about uh, means graphically we can say uh, we can see that. This is so uh, here I have taken some examples all linear polynomial I taken. Linear polynomials. So I take this polynomial p of x is equal to x minus 3. p of x is equal to x minus 3 taken. So we know that it's 0 is uh, x is equal to 3. If I put x is equal to 3, this whole thing will become 0, right? So how we interpret it uh, geometrically, what we do, we are going to draw a graph of it. Or how to draw the graph of it. We know y is equal to some x. Means then we will write the, we will draw the graph in x, y plane, our Cartesian plane, we will draw it as a graph. So what we do, this p of x I consider as y. Okay? y is equal to x minus 3. In that way we treat this as y is equal to x minus 3. It's like a linear equation in two variables we study in class 9. In that way we treat. So I write here x and here is p of x. Means y. I will give some values for x and write the values of y. Substituting. If I put x is equal to 0, I get y is equal to minus 3. Right? Any value we can put for x, independent variable. So I put x is equal to 3 here, getting a 0. x is equal to 4, I put 1 here. So we have taken these values for x. And these are the corresponding values of y. Then we plot it in a graph sheet. Okay? What are the points? These three points I plot. 0, minus 3, 3, 0, 4, 1. These points we plot in the graph sheet. So we plot here and we try to draw the graph. So I have plotted this point 0, minus 3, 3, 0, 4, 1. And join them to get a linear, you know, a line I am getting, straight line. It's linear, it is. That is the way we get a line here. What you see here, how the 0 is related to this. Here I got x is equal to 3 is a 0. So why this is coming? See, look here. This is the value of x that makes p of x 0. So this line, where it is intersecting uh, x-axis at this point 3 comma 0. The x coordinate of this point is the 0 of the polynomial. X coordinate we call axis of. The axis of the point where the line, where the line intersect x axis, that represents a zero actually. How many places like that in, in this linear equation at maximum, it is a straight line, you know. A straight line will intersect x axis at maximum one place. Sometimes it will go parallel to x axis, it will not intersect. Lots happen. So at which point, how many places it is intersecting? Only one point it will intersect. So there is only one zero for that polynomial. What is that zero? Nothing but the x coordinate of or axis of the point of intersection of the line of the graph means the line the graph with the x axis. The line of the or the graph of the given polynomial with the x axis. That represents the zero of the polynomial. Means zero is here x is equal to 3 around. So you, have, you can cross check here, you substitute 3, it's becoming 0. Take another one, second example we take, okay. See this one, p of x is equal to minus 2x, minus 2x. Here what value will make it to 0? I have to substitute x is equal to 0. Put x is equal to 0, polynomial vanishes. So p of x will become 0. So here 0 is x is equal to 0, we have seen similar example already. Again I am trying to draw the graph. To confirm that what it is. We put some values for x. As I told you, p of x will be treated as y. Okay? Treated. I get x is minus 1 when I put y. Or p x is 2. 0 when I put 0. 1 minus 2. Same way how we did in the first question. So these three points are plot. Drawing the graph. 
the graph goes like this, a straight line like this, through the origin. Okay? The points are plotted here. So this is again, this point represents a zero. The x coordinate of this point or the axis of the point represents a zero of the polynomial. And how many places it is intersecting? One, one place. So there is only one zero for that polynomial. And the zero is the axis of, of the point where the line intersects the x-axis. Okay? See another example. Come to this. Is this a polynomial or not? A constant polynomial. This is not having any x here. Okay? Constant polynomial. P of x is equal to 2. How could it become 0? Is there any value that makes it 0? No. Whatever my value of x is substitute, it's not going to affect this value. It is remaining 2 and it remains true always. So I just take few numbers. Just for, you know, for, for the name sake, we take some values for x. I put x is equal to minus 2. Value of px is unaffected. It is going to be 2. Whatever may be the value of x. I put 0. Again, y is 2. 1, again 2. That's plotting in a graph sheet. As a treating it as an equation in two variable, we plot. Plotted the points here. Minus 2, minus, minus 2, 2. Okay? Here is uh, uh, 0, 2. 1, 2. These three points are plotted, drawing them and drawing a line. This line goes parallel to x-axis. Okay? So, y is equal to 2. We have studied in ninth class. It goes parallel to x-axis. Y is equal to constant. K. Any. So, it will always go parallel to x-axis. This line is not at all intersecting your x-axis. So, what does it mean? The polynomial doesn't have, do not have any zero. It's a constant polynomial, not linear polynomial. Constant polynomial doesn't have any zero. See, this line is uh, not, never going to intersect your x-axis. So, this polynomial has no zeros. Okay? Like that. These three examples. We, we see the other examples. How if it is a, a quadratic polynomial, how we interpret uh, as a in geometrically how we interpret in graph sheet. Okay? That's what we see next. So, continuing that, we have seen geometrical meaning of zeros of uh, some linear polynomial and a constant polynomial. Next, we have taken some quadratic polynomials. Okay? Quadratic polynomials we take. This is a textbook uh, example question I have taken. The P of x is equal to x square minus 3x minus 4. Okay. This one I, as we did before, taking this P of x as y and we write here x here. Some values for x we put. This is being quadratic, you know, 2 or 3 values not enough. For drawing a line you need a, a minimum of 2 points. But for the curve, it is going to be a curve, parabolic curve we call. Okay, for this we need what? You need more points. So some 6 to 8 points we are taking. I have taken these points. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for x. I am substituting these values here. So if I put x is equal to minus 2, your y, I mean p of x will become 6 here. So, one point you obtain minus 2 comma 6. Like that all other points, you put minus 1, 0, these are the values you are getting. So, the points are minus 2, 6, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 4, all these points you are getting. So, you are taking here these uh, 8 points you have taken. Then I plot all those 8 points and draw here. So, these points are plotted and joined by a smooth curve. You are not drawing with a scalar, you are drawing with a smooth free hand figure. Join these points here, drawing this way, okay. You note down here, this curve intersects the x-axis at two points. First point is minus 1 comma 0. Here it is intersecting. Here 4 comma 0. Here also it is intersecting. So what does it mean? The polynomial has two zeros here. Quadratic polynomial, as I told you earlier, will have a maximum of two zeros. 
So here we have two it is having two zeros. What are the zeros? The x coordinate of or axis of the points where the graph intersects x axis. If the graph is intersecting x axis at these two points. Here and here. What are the what are the x coordinates of these points? This is minus one and four. So these are the zeros of the polynomial of the graph. Okay? So only two zeros it has. The quadratic polynomial maximum of two zeros. We are just uh, verifying that one. See, I have taken the uh, quadratic uh, polynomial and factorized as we did before. And we get two linear factors, x minus 4 and x plus 1. Each linear factor equating to 0, I get x is equal to 4 and x is equal to minus 1. So 4 and minus 1. Those things only get 4 and minus 1 are the zeros of the quadratic polynomial. Understand how it's clear? But here, see, you will not be asked to draw the graph and to check. This is just to explain you how the zeros are related to uh, its uh, the graph of it. Means how you geometrically interpret it. So you have to know if you are given a curve intersecting the x-axis uh, in some points. So how many points it intersect will count. The number of points the curve intersects the x-axis or nothing but the number of zeros the polynomial has and you may not be asked what are the zeros here our question is uh, seeing the graph you must tell that how many zeros the polynomial of the graph has ok just see how many places it is intersecting here it is intersecting at two places there are two zeros for that polynomial we will tell like that let's see one more example taken here see this one uh, p of x is equal to x square plus 1. This one x square plus 1. In this, whatever, any value you put for x, okay, any real value you put for x, this p of x will never become 0. If you put 1 or like this, 1 plus 1, 2 will come. Put minus 1, you put minus 1 square is 1. So 1 plus 1 again, 2 only will come. It will not become 0 for any value, real value of x. So we have taken some of them and drawn. I taken minus 2, minus 1, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Some values are taken. See, these are the corresponding values of P of X. I mean Y. Then you plot and draw. See how the graph goes. The graph goes like this. This way it is called. And it is not at all touching the X axis. Not intersecting the X axis at any point. So what you can say now? The graph does not intersect the x-axis. So, there is no zero. This polynomial has no zero. So, in no points the graph intersects the x-axis. Hence, its polynomial has no zeros. You can also check. The value of x square plus 1 will never become zero for any real value of x. So, it has, this has no zeros. Like this, some quadratic polynomial have one zero, where the graph, this parabolic graph, just touches the x-axis. I have not taken more examples. In. Okay, it will just go and just touch here and go like this way. Okay, this is this place. Suppose it's touching, then only one zero that it has. Okay, so this is how seeing the graph, you are telling how many zeros uh, its polynomial has. That is what uh, we are going to learn in this uh, topic. Now you can see your uh, textbook questions. 2.1 exercise, you, you take 2.1, exercise 2.1. In that you are given some graphs, okay. You will have to just uh, observe the uh, graph here. And tell uh, uh, it has, see this exercise 2.1. Here the graphs are given. Just check that in how many places the, the graph intersects the x-axis, okay. And tell how many zeros its polynomial has. Only that's your job. Don't have to tell what is the zero. Okay. Uh, it's not asked in the question. So you'll have to tell how many zeros. For example, if you take the first one, the graph goes parallel to x-axis. So no zeros. The second one, if you take, it intersects the x-axis. Don't worry about your y-axis here. X-axis it intersected only one point. So its polynomial has only one zero. Like the, the next one, if we take 
in intersect the x-axis at three points. So the polynomial has three zeros. This is all the questions. So you do exercise 2.1 in your textbook only, you just write your answers. Next topic we have is the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients of a quadratic polynomial. What do you mean by zeros means we know how to find the zeros of quadratic polynomial. The coefficients, just uh, let me uh, explain you that uh, what are the coefficients here, stands for what. Actually here uh, I wrote here a polynomial 2x square minus 8x plus 6, okay. So here 2 is a coefficient of x square. Like that minus 8 coefficient of x this is a constant term. These three things we call here, we use to call as coefficients, okay. The constant is not coefficient but we use here in general. Let us see, suppose you are taking our general quadratic polynomial ax square plus bx plus c. This a, b, c we are calling it as we are coefficients and we are x square and a coefficient and uh, c is constant term. Okay, let's come to this one. What is the relation? And one more thing you have to know, uh, we usually you know name the zeros with the Greek alphabets. Okay, like alpha, beta, gamma, delta, these kind of alphabets we use. See like this one. Okay, alpha, beta, gamma, delta and these kind of things. Small letters. Because we already use here A, B, C for uh, constants. X, Y, Z we usually use for uh, variables. So we need some uh, indication letters, no? So just we use the alpha, beta, gamma, delta, these kind of letters we use here. Okay, let us see. So what is this relation? If alpha and beta are the zeros of the quadratic polynomial AX square plus BX plus C, general quadratic polynomial, then alpha plus beta means the sum of the two zeros will be equal to minus b by a. What is minus b here? Is x coefficient. a is x square coefficient. Okay. So this sum of zeros alpha plus beta will be equal to minus b by a. We will do the example, it will be clearly understand. Like this, the product of zeros alpha into beta c by a means constant term by a, the x square coefficient. So what exactly? Alpha plus beta means the sum of the two zeros. If I add the two zeros, what I am getting will be exactly equal to minus of negative of coefficient of x by coefficient of x square. Minus b by a. Okay. The product of zeros means alpha into beta. If you multiply, that product will be exactly equal to the constant term by coefficient of x square. This is what we read here. C by A. Constant term by coefficient of x square. These values will be equal. Okay? This is what the relationship between the uh, zeros of a polynomial, quadratic polynomial and the coefficients of its terms. Let's see the examples. Two, three examples we have taken. Here. See, this is an example here. 2x square minus 8x plus 6. You will find its zeros by factorizing. You can use splitting middle term method. Even you can take in all the terms, the two common factor keep out, then you can factorize. Okay? Now, without taking it, I have done it. And sum and product and the, you know, the splitting middle term method. It has been factorized. So I got two linear factors, x minus 3 and 2x minus 2. Each linear factor we equate to 0 as usual. So we got x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. I got the two values for x. Both are the zeros of the quadratic polynomial. Therefore, any one of the zero you call alpha. The other zero you call beta. The two zeros. Any one, this is alpha, this is beta also, no matter. And you are very fine, this is working or not. What I have to do? I have to make everything ready because alpha is 3, beta is 1. What is a here? It's 2 coefficient of x square. 
and uh, b is coefficient of x minus 8. Okay? C is a constant time 6. Everything is ready. Now I am going to verify. What I have to do? I check what is alpha plus beta. Is it equal to our minus b by a or not? So alpha plus beta I add 3 plus 1 I get 4. Then I check what is our minus b by a. Minus b minus of minus 8 by a. a is 2. So when I divide here coming how much here? 4 coming. Is 8 by 2 is 4. See these two are same or not? Or minus b by a is same as this alpha plus beta. This is what the property says. The sum of zeros will be exactly equal to minus of x coefficient by x square coefficient. So alpha plus beta is equal to exactly equal to minus b by a. Here also 4 coming, here 4 coming. Like that alpha into beta, the product, I multiply the two zeros. Alpha into beta 3 into 1, 3. C by A, what is C here? It's constant term. 6 by 2, C by A. When I divide, again I get the 3. See, these are the same thing. So, alpha into beta is exactly equal to C by A. What about that? Quadratic polynomial. Alright. So, what we are verifying, we have verified now. Alpha plus beta is equal to minus B by A. Alpha into beta is equal to C by A. This is what the uh, verification you will be asked, you will be given a quadratic polynomial, then it will ask you find the zeros. You know how to find the zeros. Then they will ask you verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients. So you have to check whether alpha plus beta is same as minus b by a, and alpha into beta is same as c by a. Verify. Okay? This is one example I take. Other examples uh, we are taking the as we have done before, other the examples I take here. See, look here, quadratic one, but binomial two terms are there. Okay, so this is how to factor as I told you earlier. You try to use a common factor take out, if not, apply identity, which is factorizable only, they will give you. They will not give you x square plus 5, they will not give you. x square minus 5. So, you are writing as, as we did before. You are writing in the form a square minus b square. It is a plus b into a minus b. We did before. Okay? A plus b into a minus b. So that we identity we will apply. I write x square minus root 5 square. So a plus b into a minus b. x plus root 5 into x minus root 5. We got the zeros. Minus root 5 and plus root 5. Okay? So this is alpha. This is beta. What are a, b, c? Coefficient of x square, that is a, that is 1 x square, so 1. b, there is no x term. So b is 0, constant c, minus 5 here. Okay, everything ready. So now I am going to verify alpha plus beta. Minus root 5 plus root 5, I get 0. What is minus b by a? 0 by minus of 0 by 1, that is 0. So these both are same, equal. Like that alpha into beta minus root 5 into uh, root 5 if I multiply root 5 into root 5 become 5 and negative sign here. So minus root 5. What is c by a? So minus 5 by 1 that is minus 5. So these are same. Okay. This is another example I have. Uh, we have done. One more example let us take where we have factorizing by taking the common factor out. See this one. Example 3. 3x square minus 6x. Take the common factor out. 3x common factor. The x minus 2. Two, two linear factors. 3x. You can take x or 3x. No matter. 3x is 0. x minus 2 is 0. Equate in terms 0. If 3x is 0 means x will be 0. Right? x minus 2 is 0 means x will be 2. So here is alpha. This is uh, beta. Alpha and uh, beta taken. Okay. So alpha is 0, beta is 2. Okay? So these are the two zeros I take. So a and B, A, B, C are here. A is 3, B is x coefficient, that is minus 6. C, no constant term is available. So if C is 0. So checking now what? Alpha plus beta. 0 plus 2, I am getting 2. Minus B by A, minus of minus 6 by 3, I get 2. Same answer. 
both are equal. Like that alpha and beta. 0 and 2 comes to be 0. What is C by A? C is 0. So 0 by A. This A is here 3. So 0 by 3 is 0. These three examples are more than enough uh, to do the questions from your textbook. Now we do one thing. Take uh, exercise 2.2. You know, question number one, exercise 2.2, question number one. There are some bits of uh, questions are there. Everything is all, all this kind, huh? you should know how to factorize and how to find the zeros already we are familiar with. Here only new thing is you are going to verify the uh, property. This is for the new thing. Finding zeros already we have done many questions. So you do those questions. Huh? Uh, they are asking you find the zeros of the quadratic polynomial and verify the relationship between uh, zeros and coefficient. So you have to do all these things for those questions. Okay, so you will try. Yes, in the previous class we have seen if I am given a quadratic polynomial, how to find its zeros? If we factorize and we get two linear factor equating to zero, uh, we will get two zeros of it. Okay, if I am given the zeros, how to frame or how to form the quadratic polynomial? One thing is here, if you are given the zeros, it is not one quadratic polynomial you are going to get. For many quadratic polynomials, you will have same zeros. Okay, we see how. See here, what is it? Uh, result you have to write down this result. A quadratic polynomial with the given zeros alpha and beta. How to write here? How to express it? K into, I will tell you what is this K, okay? K into x square minus sum of zeros into x. Minus alpha plus beta into x, x term. Plus product of zero, means alpha beta. What is that? If alpha and beta are the zeros of a polynomial, you can express the polynomial, quadratic polynomial as k into x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta. What is k? k is any non-zero real number. The k if I put zero, the entire thing will become zero. So it can be any real number but not zero, okay? Non-zero real number. For different values of k, we get different polynomials. As I told you, if you change the value of this k, k may be any real number. If you put 1, one polynomial will come. If you put 2, another polynomial will come. Okay? For all the polynomials, the same zeros will work. Isn't it? So now, here examples, can you see, you will clearly understand. Okay. What is this k? I will explain. See here, question, form a quadratic polynomial whose zeros are 3 and 1. Exactly, I have taken this polynomial only. Okay. Previously, that polynomial. This 3 and 1 only are taken. So now how I write the polynomial? See the polynomial is k into x square minus alpha plus beta. I mean 3 plus 1 x plus alpha beta. 3 into 1. Okay. This is coming k into x square minus 4 x plus 3. As I told you before k is any non-zero real number. We have to write for different value of values of k. We get different polynomials. We put you put any value for k. Suppose you put k is equal to 1, you get one polynomial like this. x square minus 4x is equal to 3. Okay. If you put k is equal to 2, 2 into x square minus 4x plus 3, I get this polynomial. Where is this polynomial? Exactly this polynomial. Okay. If you put k is equal to 3, another polynomial will come. So for all the polynomials, what zeros? What are the zeros? This 3 and 1 only. For example, see how I will show you what this k is exactly from that question I show you. See this one you have factorized now. You factorize it. How you factorize? Straight away I went for a splitting middle term. Suppose if I look for the common factor, what is the common factor in all the terms? 2 is a clearly common factor. I take the 2 out. So what is coming then? It is becoming x square minus 4x plus 3. Now I factorize. Now I factorize, I get. See now, this 2 now, if I factorize now, 2 into I will get the same thing, x minus 3. You know, x, x minus 3 into 
uh, x uh, minus 1. So you will equate to 0 as I told you. You will equate to 0. What I equate to 0? Will I equate to the 2 to 0? We will not equate the 2 to 0. We equate these linear factors to 0. I equate x minus 3 is 0. x minus 1 is 0. I get here x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. Same zeros came or not? 3 and 1. Okay. Here is 3. Here is 1. Same thing. So before factorizing I took the common factor out. This 2 no. This 2. This is what here the k is. The k is what? The 2. Without 2 if I put here 2 or if I multiply completely by 3 or whatever the number I multiply that common factor will come out. That is not going to make any change in the zeros. Zeros will be this x minus 3 and x minus 1 when equated to 0, I get x is equal to 3, x is equal to 1. These are the zeros. Okay. So, if this term is all the term, if I multiply by some other number 5, again I will get the same zeros. Same zeros. No change in the zeros. So, always I have to look for what? There is not one polynomial having these zeros. Many polynomials. Each time I keep on multiplying this equation, I, for example, I get this one. If I multiply this by 4 or 5 or 7 or root 3 or whatever, I will get the same zeros. Okay. So, if you want, uh, that is why the question asks you what in your, in your book, you can see the question. I have done some questions from book. Question asks you, for the quadratic polynomial, they did not ask you. A quadratic polynomial, one quadratic polynomial, whose zeros may be given? In your book, they have given the sum and product of zeros. They have not given alpha and beta. They gave you, they simplified your work. They gave what is the sum of zeros, what is the product of zeros. And asking you to write one quadratic polynomial. So you don't have to do anything. Means alpha and beta they did not give, take care here. Huh? So the alpha plus beta they gave you. Alpha and the beta they gave you. Nothing to worry. What you have to do, you should write that. The required polynomial is k into x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta. Minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta. So they already they gave you what is alpha plus beta. They gave 1 by 4. Alpha into beta they gave you minus 1. Just substitute here. So when I substitute I get like this. Okay. Now I can put any value for k. I will write for different values of k. I get a different polynomial. For example, I use, for me it is easy, I remove this denominator 4 huh? or if I take LCM the common denominator 4 will come. So in order to remove that 4, I put k is equal to 4. So I multiply completely by 4. So I get like this 4x square, these two multiply this 4 getting cancelled. So 4x square minus 1x or x minus 4, each time multiplied by 4. This is a quadratic polynomial. You can write even k is equal to 1 and leave this as fraction. No matter. Okay. One quadratic polynomial. Any quadratic polynomial you have to write. Keep in mind, they have not given you alpha and beta in the question. They give you what is alpha plus beta. And they give you what is alpha in the beta. Just substitute as a formula. Remember this one always. Okay. Another example. Uh, taken same question number 2. I taken the third bit. Here alpha plus beta they gave me 0. Alpha into beta they gave me root 5. Same thing I am going to do. K into x square minus alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta. Substitute the values. K you take 1. Any number as I told you. So when I put K is 1 I get. This is here x square minus 0x plus root 5. Okay. So our polynomial is x square plus root 5. No x term. If 0x we don't have to write. K is 1. If you put k is 2, another polynomial as you wish. You can write many polynomials like that. So, I have done two bits from the same question. Remaining bits, there are four more bits I think. You do them by yourself. Okay. Uh, this is that exercise comes to an end. So, we have learned two things. One is if the uh, polynomial is given, how to find its uh, uh, zeros. The second thing, if I am given the zeros, how to frame the polynomial. This is a reverse process. How to make a polynomial like that. These two things uh, we learn in this exercise. Okay.